welcome to this month's episode of Adventures in Fly Tying. Have we got a fly for you this month? Look at this. Is this fantastic? This looks like something straight out of a Timothy Leary fantasy. This is called the Lithuanian Bat. I'm not making that up. This is something you're only going to see on Adventures in Fly Tying. And this is a fantastic pattern for smallmouth and largemouth bass, for pike, and get this, for redfish and for sea trout. This is a great saltwater fly as well. Now, to tie this, we're going to use a very unique hook. As you can see, that's not a fly hook. That's actually a jig hook. We're using the Mustad 34185D. D means Doratin. This also comes in a stainless steel version. The Doratin is half the physical weight and is a much better hook to use for this fly if you're going to use it in fresh water. But you can use either of them. The pattern is actually very simple. We're going to use that and we're going to use black presentation eyes to give a little bit of weight so that we make sure the hook is inverted. This is a very weedless fly. The entire body and tail of the fly is going to be tied using zonker strips, in this case a wonderful deep purple. We're also going to use, just to add a little bit of action, some rubber leg material and the entire fly is going to be finished with a little bit of sparkle chenille at the head just to add that unique look for it, the Lithuanian bat. You know what? You've got to love this pattern. This is a great one. Lithuanian bat is just a really neat fly and it's a lot of fun to tie. You can have a lot of fun with colors on this. Those of you who have been following Adventures in Fly Tying might notice that I'm using a different vise today than what I normally do. I'm tying on the Griffin Mongoose. I've got to tell you what, I really like this vise a lot and especially for a fly like this, this rotary function is awesome. Just go ahead and start by putting your lid eyes, presentation eyes, in this case black presentation eyes, right behind where that jig is going to turn up to the eye because that's where you want to finish this entire fly. Make about a half a dozen wraps in each direction. Then to keep it from spinning you make a frapping wrap which goes around the lead eyes but above the shank of the hook. And I'll make three or four frapping wraps like that and then I'm going to bring my thread all the way back to the back of the hook shank. One good thing to do with a fly like this is once you've got the lead eyes on, a little bit of flex cement will absolutely hold those in forever. And I love the flex cement with these long applicators because they make it very easy. Now, using the Magnum Zonker strip, I want to measure that so it's a little bit longer than the hook itself. That's the length that I want that tail to come out. Flip it upside down. Cut that away. Now, because this fly ride's inverted, I need to invert the rabbit strip. Now, you're noticing I'm moving this all the way back. I'm going to start by making one or two wraps to hold that in tightly. I'm going to chase it down to the end of the shank, right above the barb, then bring my thread back forward again. Make a good open weave. You actually want an open weave underneath here so this can capture the rest of the rabbit strip. Now, I'm going to take my rabbit strip that I have left and I'm going to attach it right on top of that. This will make up the body of the fly. Tie that down tightly. Bring your thread all the way back up to the front. And in this case, I'm going to throw a half hitch on there because I'm going to use the rotary feature of this vise. Take my thread, put it over the bobbin rest. Now, once again, a little bit of glue underneath here will really help to hold this fly together and make it almost completely indestructible. It's very important that you hold this tight and begin to wrap that rabbit fur. Every now and then, stop and just kind of stroke the rabbit fur back. And boy, you can make such a neat body when you do this with a rotary vise. What a great invention. That's as far as you want to go because now we have to tie in the rubber leg material. So what I want to do is take just one or two wraps of thread to hold this in place.
clip that out. Now, wrap back over that body that you just made. Give yourself a little bit of space right there. Everything is tied down nice and tight. Now we want to put in the rubber legs. To put in the rubber legs, take a strip of your rubber leg material and take about three strands. Take off about six inches of those three strands, clip them away from the material. Without even separating them, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this back so it's about two-thirds the length of the body. Two wraps of thread, fold that over, two more wraps to hold it, pull this really tight and clip. That adds a little bit of a fuzz like that. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, lengthwise. We'll measure that out. Two wraps to hold it in place. Two wraps to hold the fold. Pull the fold tight. Now, with each one, if you just hold, pull them out and release them, pull them tight and release them, they'll all separate right out. Isn't that neat? Now it's all we have to do is we have to finish the head of this fly using a little bit of chenille. I'm going to use purple ice chenille, or actually this is a sparkle chenille, woolly bugger sparkle chenille. Take my chenille, take a little bit of the material away from the end to expose the thread core, tie that down, get my thread back up in front of the hook eye. Now for this, you can use the rotary function, but since we're going to figure eight, it's actually a little bit easier if I do this by hand. One wrap behind it, one wrap up and over, come underneath, X to the back, one more wrap behind, one more wrap in front, you're holding the material up from the bottom, one, two thread wraps, and a third tight one will hold that chenille so it won't move, trim it close, now that's all I have to do is wrap that body in place, I'll wrap the head in place, build a neat thread head. Throw a whip finish on it. And there you have it, the hippie version of the Lithuanian bat. What a fantastic pattern. Get out there and fish this one for smallmouth. Absolutely fish this one for largemouth. You know, purple is a very taking color for largemouth bass. So all you have to do is read bass Mag Bassmaster Magazine and you'll find that out. But what a pattern. This definitely will work on a lot of different animals. Look at that. Fantastic. The Lithuanian bat. You're only going to see that on adventure.